Everybody rise for the Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, liberty and justice for all. I can have a moment of silence, please. Okay, thank you. Well, welcome everybody here. Well, Mike, yeah. um, I just wanted to note the passing of Mrs. Sandy Seba. Yeah. Debbie Seba passed yeah. away. Uh, yeah. Important influence in the south part of the county, yeah. Elm Grove Baptist Church, and we husband, just uh, remember their family. Husband just passed away in January. Yeah. Okay, again, I just want to welcome everybody. Anybody be watching or is watching now? Um, I'm gonna. Do the roll call now. I'll be starting with the roll call day. And I, Commissioner Doug Smith. Aye. Commissioner Mike Steven. Aye. Commissioner Jeff Culberson. Here. Commissioner Vicki Kahn. Here. Okay, go ahead, Vicki. I move that the board recess for a close. Hold it. I'm sorry. Mr. Chairman, if I could note, you have on your agenda review of resolution 2019 10. Prior to that, and Commissioner Cause has the language, I'd ask that the board consider going into an executive session for 15 minutes. Okay. I move that the board recess for a closed executive meeting for the discussion of a subject involving the legal interests of the county as justified by KSA 75-4319B2 for consultation with legal counsel for the board, which would be deemed privilege in the attorney-client relationship, and that the board resume open meeting at 9.20 a.m. in the meeting room of the board. Present in the executive meeting will be Commissioners Jeff Colbertson, Vicki Koss, Mike Smith, Doug Smith, Mike Steven, County Administrator Mark Lothry, Senior County Counselor David Van Paris, and Mike Seck. Second. Motion second. Any discussion for call roll? I just want to remind us, Mr. Chairman, that we're going in executive session. I know it's my duty to go in there, but I do have some concerns about the last executive session we had a few months ago that uh, seemed like uh, stuff that was said in that executive session showed up in an attorney's packet the next week. Uh, okay. Just, you know, somebody can explain that to me. I would like to hear it. Or well, go are on. we just going to do things different from now on and make sure nothing leaks out of our executive sessions? I would, I would just say that it's been brought to everybody's attention, a good point made. And just remind the commissioners, including myself, that anything that we say inside the executive session stays between us. And I would hope that everybody would uh, abide by the, uh, the executive session privilege as it stands. Anything else, Doug? No, sir, that's it. Okay. Uh, Here we go. Did it, did we vote yet? Yes. Okay. No. 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 Oh, okay. I'm voting. Oh, okay. I'm getting no guys. You threw me off. Aye. Mr. Smith? Aye. Mr. Stephen? Aye. Mr. Culberson? Aye. Mr. Cause? Aye. Thank you. Let the record show that the uh, board has resumed regular session at 9.20. Uh, discussion was limited to uh, legal interest of the county. No decisions were made. Okay. We're back open. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, I'm going to ask Mr. Bowden, did I get it right? Yes. We, we, I'm going to allow you to have 15 minutes to present to the governing body. If you step forward, please. Mind if I set my stuff here for just Over a second? Here. I'm just going to hand you folks some stuff.
قسم Good morning, Commissioners. Good morning. Um, as you all know, my name is Ross Bowden. I'm an attorney representing Flatland Excavating, and uh, we're here to continue our discussion about Leavenworth County's shutdown of Flatland that's been ongoing for um, roughly about seven weeks at this point. Um, as just for some context, as you all will recall from the last meeting, the county gave us a list of concerns from the last meeting and asked us to come here today and show progress uh, toward those concerns. So um, what I'm here to report to you all today is that not only have we made progress, we've addressed every single issue that the county has raised. And so um, we're going to again request that the county, based on what we're providing to you all here today, uh, to let this business open back up. We've addressed your concerns, and that's our request today. Uh, if there's concerns going on in the future, we can have those conversations, but this business needs to get open back up. And I'm going to walk through these issues with you folks. And as everybody also knows, there's a, there's a lawsuit going on as well. I'd like to compartmentalize those things for today. Let's set the lawsuit aside for today, and let's talk about getting this business back up and running, okay? So... The first thing I'd like to do is uh, just point you to the first page of the slides, and I'll just walk you through these. So on the first page here, you can see there's the list of, of items, um, obviously a condensed version of what was handed to us at the last meeting. Um, and so I'm just going to march through these items and show you what we've done here. So flipping over to the second page, again, just for a little added context, I don't want to rehash old ground here, but... Uh, there was a, a violation letter that was issued in response to a county complaint um, to the state, and the state um, said there were a handful of violations um, at Flatland and asked Flatland to come back um, early in March and report back and provide the state assurances that it was fixing those concerns that the state raised. Um, Flatland did that. There's a copy of, of that submission included in your materials here. That's Appendix A, and that's what Flatland sent back to the state. In response to what Flatland sent back to the state, if you flip over to the next page, you'll see that the KDHE reported back that Flatland was, in fact, in compliance with Kansas laws and regulations and had fixed the issues that were addressed in the state's letter to Flatland uh, from February 15th. Uh, nevertheless, um, the county said it didn't put much stock in what the state had to say, I guess, um, wanted additional proof, additional verification. That wasn't enough to let this business open back up. But I just wanted to point out to you that, you know, right here on slide five in your materials, is a copy of the declaration that is provided by Mr. Thomas Hayes, um, a man with over 20 years of experience at the state uh, with the KDHE inspecting landfills, and it was his opinion that this landfill is compliant with Kansas laws. But again, the county said you have additional concerns, so we're here to talk about those. So marching on down the list here. Um, you'll see on the right side... Here's a list of the KDHE items that were identified. I'm looking at slide six. Um, so I'm just going to walk through and show you what we've done. So the county asked us to provide an informational flyer to our clients and a statement from our two biggest clients that basically equate to about 80% of our business, um, acknowledging certain things, um, screening of materials, uh, certain materials not being allowed, uh, tarping trucks, that sort of thing. We've done that. We sent out this letter. A copy of that letter is included in your materials. 
That's tab B. If you want to flip, flip over quickly over to tab B, you'll see there's a full size copy of what was sent to, to our customers, not just those two customers, by the way, many, many other customers. Um, we tried to capture as many as we could in the short time frame that we were provided and address the concerns that the county wanted us to raise with them. Parking on 227th Street, tarping loads, screening materials before they come to the landfill so that the landfill doesn't have to do it, um, reaffirming gate hours, and a, another safety item that we threw in there as well. So that's been done. Uh, we've had conversations with them in addition to this written notification. And on top of that, what we're also going to do is include um, in tab C, uh, this is going to be a little blurb that's going to go at the end of uh, our invoices to clients for the next four weeks to reiterate these things so we, we can drill it into them as best we can. Again, we can only do so much here. We can't control these other separate businesses, but we're just trying to show you that we're doing our best here. So that's, um, that's the first item that the county had asked for. Moving on to the next item. This is the waste screening, and I've got a few slides here. Uh, if you want to look at these waste screening slides, this is on page 4, slides 7 and 8. So the county asked us to provide proof of trained staff, provide a copy of this, of, of this screen waste log. We, we do have that waste log. It's, it's a hard copy. As you might expect at a landfill, we don't have you know, uh, computers out there to um, a network set up to have a, an electronic copy of that, but we've got a hard copy log um, that, that we, we track this information on, and we've updated it even since this shutdown has occurred. So um, we're, we're trying to be even more thorough with that. So we've got that. You wanted proof of staff. Um, we've got a photograph. This is, this is our screening staff right here. That he's literally in the middle of screening materials there. Now, we obviously aren't in operation at this point because we've been shut down, but um, there is still screening work that can occur. We can pull out you know, salvageable materials so that when we are up and running again, that sort of thing, that um, we, can, we can be ready, get ready to go, get ready to drag out any, any unapproved items and get those off the site as soon as, as, soon as possible. But um, you can see him right there um, at work. That's our guy. Um, Going on, continuing with the waste screening issue, you can see on slide eight here, we've installed uh, a camera. This is something, again, not required by any regulation whatsoever, but you guys have asked us to take additional measures, so this is one idea that we came up with was, let's put a camera at the entrance. If you can see it's up high, so it's able to see into the beds of the truck. Um, what we'll try to do as the trucks come in there, um, We'll look at the loads, uh, do, a, do a visual inspection from above, see if we can readily identify anything that needs to be screened, and also check for the tarps. That's one of the big things you, uh, you all seem uh, concerned about. Some of the uh, folks here for the public were concerned about is trash on the highways. Well, we'll try to do our best to make sure uh, the trucks going in and out of there are tarped so we keep the highways clean and address your guys' concerns. So um, we've got that in place, and, and that camera's been installed, and that's something we put in, I believe, on um, either Friday or, or, uh, or Monday. So we got right to work on it. Flipping over to the next page, page 5, I'm looking at slides 9 and 10 now. If you want to look at these photographs, uh, we have signs here. Uh, the county wanted proof um, of the additional signage that we s installed, the delineation of the, uh, or of the screening areas. Um, we've got that in place. Now you'll look, I don't want anybody to look at this and say, well, oh, well, that just looks like a temporary sign. That's not going to stay in place very well. Well, that's actually intentional. So as you might imagine with a landfill, it fills in over time, right? So the screening area has to move uh, from time to time as the landfill fills in. So the signs have to be movable so that as we have to retreat, uh, we move the signs and keep the screening area in place along the way. So we've got that in place. That's been in place. Um, but I'm showing you here the, the photographs of that so you all, you all can see that for yourselves. So that addresses um, item three from the KDHE items, um, all three of those items there. Um, 
One more slide on the screening issue on page six, slide 11. Uh, just showing a slightly different angle here. I just wanted you all to see the other angle from the, from the prior page is kind of looking into the landfill area where, where the trucks would be um, depositing the debris. The next slide um, on page 11 here um, shows you the actual screening area over there where things are putting in, being put in different piles. You can see that uh, being sorted um, so they can be handled appropriately, whether that's salvage um, or materials that have to be removed from the landfill, whatever that is. So uh, just wanted to give you guys a, a visual so you can see that that stuff actually is taking place and has been. Because clearly we, we haven't been operating, so, I mean, this, this shows haven't been in operation, but we've got these piles there. So this is something that's been in place for some time and wanted you all to know that. So um, one of the other items that you guys asked for is stability of waste placement. You wanted a plan of this um, and what we're going to do. So we've provided in tab D for you all, this is a draft of an updated uh, more robust operating plan for you all to look at. As you all will remember from the last meeting, one of the big concerns we had is, well, we need to hear from you guys. Tell us what you want us to do. There was some pushback on that. Well, no, you guys come up with the ideas. So, okay, this is, this is what we've come up with. Here's our draft. Here's, here's a draft of our revised operating plan for you guys to take a look at. If you guys have other ideas uh, to suggest to us, we're all ears on that. But, uh, you know, again, it starts with good communication between um, the county and Flatland. So that's there. Same issue with the compaction of waste. That's also part of the operating plan. You can take a look at that at tab D and um, let us know if that uh, fits the county's concerns. One thing I did want to mention on the compaction of waste in slide 13 here is this is certainly an issue where we're mutually aligned. Flatland certainly doesn't want to not be compacting the waste. Obviously, the, the landfill at, at some level is limited by volume, so it has no incentive to not be compacting its waste. That's just lost money there. So uh, we're aligned on that issue, and by all means, um, you know, a, a business is, is there to make money, so uh, we're going to be doing everything we can to compact that waste and make sure we meet the county's concerns there. Um, so, just a quick recap on slide 14. Those were the five issues uh, related to KDHE items that the um, county wanted us to address, and we've addressed all of those, and um, happy to have any further dialogue. Then let's switch gears here. The second category of issues that the county raised, one is the KDHE items, the second was the special use permit items. So we start those on slide 15 here. So going into those issues, truck parking was an issue. So what we did here, um, you'll see on the, the first slide of 16 on the truck parking issue, you'll see that's the entrance gate into Flatland. Um, as you can see, it's plenty wide back behind that initial entry gate to have a good staging and parking area. Um, and in fact, this is one of the great concerns that, um, or great ideas that came from um, um, one of the commenters last week said, why don't you have a parking area on site? Well, we'll create that. So what we did was, uh, or what we proposed to do, um, uh, you'll see on slide 17, is the addition of a second gate. So what we can do is we can have um, a, a front gate so that the trucks can, can get in off of the street, since that was the county's concern, if trucks parked on that street, Second gate is placed a ways back. Could get 30, 40 trucks uh, at, at least parked up in, in that area. But yet the second gate um, won't be open until um, it's allowed at, at 7 o'clock. So we stay within the uh, uh, county's requested operating hours. But that will take care of the county's concern. And you can see the aerial photo of, um, of, of what that will look like on 18. So plenty of area there to have the trucks park in there and get them off the street. One thing to point out quickly on slide 19, uh, this is a photograph of the trucks backed up at the county transfer station, parked on the street, 
pack 20 or vehicles are so deep you can also see uh, many of those truck beds not not tarped many of those same issues going on uh, right there at the county transfer station just something to think about when the county wants to selectively enforce these sorts of things something uh, every, everybody should consider here um, so I'll say about that I don't need to get into it beyond that the picture kind of speaks for itself there moving on uh, trash and debris removal so we received a list on Friday of properties that uh, supposedly had some trash on well we took that list got right to work we called all those folks tried to call all those folks and said hey can we come on your property Mr. you need to be wrapping this up it's 15 minutes up. We've got your books. I understand. I, I'm doing that, but you need to be wrapping yeah. up the will. I'll, I'll do my. I'm doing my best to get through this quickly. I'm, I'm rushing. Yeah, but I'm, I'm, I'm just a minute or two. We need to shut it down. I, I understand. At the same time, you know, look, the county's shutting down a business. Let me say my piece here. I'll, I'll get through it as one quickly or two more as minutes, I can. One or, two, one or two more minutes, and let's yeah. wrap it up. I understand, Chairman. I'll do my best. So um, we did go go through and and look at the trash. Uh, next slides, you can see 21 and 22. These are the ponds that were reported at the last meeting to supposedly be so full of trash that we couldn't walk across them. Uh, so that's a photo of, of us out there uh, on Friday picking up trash out of those ponds. You can see those trash. There's no trash really um, that I can see in these photographs in those ponds, but we went out there and looked. Looked pretty clean to me, but look. Picture speaks for itself there. Um, same thing with uh, slide 22. Um, as you can kind of see, uh, 22 and 23, a lot of what might have looked like some trash in some of those photographs looks like it's just leaves. It, it, this is a photograph of, of the actual pond on slide 23. It's, it's just a pile of leaves. At first glance, it might look like some trash, but that's literally just leaves there. Now, I'm not saying there isn't any trash anywhere outside the landfill. I'm not trying to make that claim. But all I'm saying is let's, let's, take a, let's try to take an objective look at the situation here. Um, I mean, is Okay, that, 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 that's going to do it. Hey, no, Ms. No. Mr. Commissioner, hang on. No, uh, no, I'm, I'm not hanging there's on. There's one important, no, I'm one not, important I'm thing I need to address here. It. We've, that, that's this is it. helpful to the county. That, yeah, that's it. We've got the book. We appreciate it. Let us go on with our business. Thank you. I, I'm, I'm going to make one, Thank more, you. one more quick comment. We, we've created a website to help alleviate the county's concerns here on slide 24. We want to try to help take some of that administrative burden off the county, and we've created that website so that folks can, can report when they see trash, when it's out there, um, for, for us to go, go address we it. We've got to follow the rules. Listen, you're yeah. gonna have, I'm going to have to have a deputy come up if you don't sit down. Uh, sit well, that's, down. That, that's fine. It, thank you. You're limiting thank my, you for my conversation, so that's thank all you. I've been allowed to say. Thank you. So, thank, thank you. If you have any other questions, I'd be happy to answer. Appreciate thank you. Thank you. Go ahead. Mr. Chairman, I move that the cease and desist order be held in abeyance for a period of 30 days providing that flatland operate within the strict confines of the special use permit and that the matter be reviewed in 30 days. I'll second that for discussion. Motion and a second. Discussion. Um, so the fine print in this is uh, it allows for non-friable asbestos. So that might be all right with the new KDEG regulations, but this landfill does not have a containment liner. So if you're going to do this, I would recommend that you at least add no asbestos, friable or non-friable allowed. Okay. Thank you, Jeff. One comment. Uh, the transfer station picture, there was no trash in that picture, I noted. Okay. <laughs> we've, got, we've, we've done enough discussion on this. I'm going to call a roll if everybody's okay. I'll start with I. Aye. Aye. Mr. Smith, Mr. Stephen? No. Mr. Culberson? Nay. Mr. Cause? Aye. Passes three to two. And that's 30 days. 30 days. Okay, I'm going to, now I'm going to give the folks that are on the want to speak an opportunity, three minutes. Please come forward if you still want to. Ms. Sharon Wagner? Good morning. Mr. Chairman, I'm sorry to interrupt. I just want to make sure I understood because I was... <coughs> you are interrupting. 
the, the motion that was made was to let us open for 30 days. I just didn't hear it. I'm sorry. Well, if you'd sit down and ask you to, you probably would have. Yes, it is. Please have a seat. And we can get with you later, okay? Sure. Thank okay. you. I appreciate it. I, I had a question. Uh, Hold on, Sharon. Are we going to amend the motion to include no friable or non friable asbestos? I can do that. Yeah, I have no problem with yeah, that. I have no problem with that. Should we, Mr. Counselor, can Counselor, we do that? The no motion's been made and voted on. It would require a new motion. Dealing with just asbestos, just just address a motion as for asbestos alone. So, Chairman, may I amend my motion? Or just make a new motion. Make a motion. I, I move that um, the abatement uh, includes that no um, asbestos be allowed, friable or friable non-friable non -friable asbestos be allowed in the uh, C&D landfill. A second. Any discussion on that one? No, I'll call the roll. Aye. Commissioner Smith? Aye. Commissioner Stephen? Aye. Commissioner Culberson? Nay. Commissioner Collins. Okay, I'm sorry, Ms. Wagner. Go ahead. Um, I'm Sharon Wagner, and just so for the record, my husband had time after me, so he is giving um, giving me that his time to me. Um, I had walked up in a plan to be able to address this board and to tell you thank you very much for giving us the opportunity to present some issues that we continue to have. And um, unfortunately, a motion was made and passed before the residents of Leavenworth County had an opportunity to present to you. And so um, I absolutely respect the position that you are in. I served on a local school board for over 12 years, and I understand how thankless this job can be. But I also knew my commitment was to the residents that I represent. And I will tell you, I feel slighted today that I was not given that opportunity before a motion was made and addressed. So I will leave it at that, and I will go on to my points that I had planned for today. Um, one thing that I would like to bring up is that I believe is your job is the welfare and safety of the residents of Leavenworth County not to businesses, not to anybody that chooses to operate in Leavenworth County. You're, you're, you, are in, you are representing the residents of this county, the Leavenworth residents of this county. And a few things that were said last week that I totally agree with the counselor is that, and I will read it verbatim to what was said last week, I can't imagine there is a landfill in this country that does not have some trash surrounding it or in adjacent properties. I don't, dis I don't disagree with that at all. The problem is, is the magnitude of this operation in a residentially zoned area is inappropriate. The amount of debris is just going to increase the, the problems that the residents of Leavenworth County have. The other thing that I don't disagree with the counselor said last year, we can't control fires. Fires are going to happen in landfills. It's going to happen. The magnitude of the operation increases the risk for fires, increases the impact to the safety and welfare of the residents of Leavenworth County. I didn't make those claims. The counselor for landfill made those claims. No way to control fires. No way to stop trash. Those were two things that were said. The other thing that was said is we can only do so much. Don't disagree. That goes back to the magnitude of the operation. The magnitude of that operation is too large for the residentially zoned area that it is in. That is why it is a safety and a hazard to the residents of Leavenworth County. Again, another item that's been brought up multiple times is Leavenworth County needs a landfill. I have no idea. I'm not in your shoes. I don't know what metric that you use. I don't know what metric that you use to decide that. That's your business. But I, what I would tell you is that my understanding as a resident of Leavenworth County is you need it for the residents of Leavenworth County. It has already been stated by the counselor that 80% of that debris that is going into a Leavenworth County residentially zoned area is not even from Leavenworth County, but yet we need one in Leavenworth County. 
I don't, I'm not disputing that there's a need. I'm just disputing of where it's at, the magnitude of the operation that has been allowed to continue. And, and I understand that you guys have already made your motion, but I will tell you, this is not new. This has been going on for two years. Forgive me if I don't believe that anything is going to change. You added asbestos to that claim. Who's going to check for that? A company that has already lost the trust of Leavenworth County residents, you're going to allow them to inspect whether there's asbestos that's going to impact me, going to impact my children, going to impact my grandkids. You're leaving it up to a company that has already lost the trust of this body and of the Leavenworth County residents. I don't understand that. Your job is to take care of us. It's the safety and welfare of the residents of this county. Not to help a private business. I'm all over private business. But not in this area. This is a zoned residential area. And we've allowed an operation of a huge magnitude to operate and to impact the safety and welfare of this community. And I just ask you, I understand the motion has been made that some of these points are things that have been brought up by their counselor, and I know you guys know that, and I don't mean to be on my soapbox, but I'm telling you I am passionate about this community, and I'm passionate about my family and the residents, and I hope that you guys consider that. Yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you. Thank you. He cannot come back up and speak. Why is he coming back up to speak? Karen Crook. Do I have a Karen Crook Can I go downstairs and get a deputy? No, not yet. We're okay. I'll, I'll take care of it. Howard Crook. Morning, sir. Good morning. Good morning to all of you. Uh, my name's Howard Crook. I reside at 31871 uh, north of the dump. We call it a dump. Uh, I tell you, uh, I, I, just like my sister, I, I'm just flabbergasted. I don't even know what to say right now. I signed up to speak. Uh, I understand she she nailed everything just pretty much on the head. Uh, I'm looking through this draft here that we just approved. Uh, we just tore up the SUP last week. Everything, the hours, the trash, the trucks, the semis, and right back our draft, we're going to run from 7 to 8 p.m. again. Mr. Liss, babies go back go to sleep back here at 7.30 at night. And the semis are rolling down the hills with their jake brakes blowing. The windows rattle into my house, 7.30, 8 o'clock at night. So we gain nothing there. We're going to run to 8 o'clock at night, Monday through Saturday. That means the granddaughter swimming pool Friday, on Friday night will put up with all the semis blowing up and down the highways. That means no picnic on the back patio on Saturday evening with family. Where I live is my, where my family all grew up in my parents' home. That's where we have our get-togethers. That's a quarter of a mile from the highway and 50, 60, 70 semis a day. You go down through here and it, it just tears it up. The landfill may open up appropriate hours under circumstances warrant. You opened up a whole can of worms because all they got to do now is operate at 9, 10, 11 o'clock at night. And all they got to do is tell you what was warrant. We had to get it covered. You, this draft opens up another box of worms that is least constructive than the original SUP. And then I want to speak on behalf of what this is doing to our school district out there. 192 Highway is a small highway, narrow highway. This morning I was driving the school bus and I counted up the students and in the freshman to junior parking lot, there's over 80 students in there. We're talking 14 to 17-year-old kids. Another 70 over in the senior parking lot. You go around the elementary school, there's 95 cars lined up dropping off elementary kids. All on this sharp curve right there. If any of you have been out there to Pleasant Ridge, you know what it is. So we've got semis rolling through there all hours of the night, activities, after school, practices. This, this community does not need this danger. We've just seen six girls in a rural community 
south of Oklahoma City yesterday hit by a tractor trailer. A small community of 3,000 on small roads. I hope that our community never has to deal with one of these semis. We dang near had one already at 7 and 192. That family was extremely lucky. Their van looked just like that car those six girls were killed in yesterday. So I'm asking for our community. This is not what we need. This is a commercial business, a huge business. And it's it's not what our community needs. It's not what our school needs. Okay. So Thank that's you, all. sir. Thank you, sir. Mike Redford. Mike here. All right, I'll move on to Mr. Clem. Your turn, sir. Three minutes, do your best. Well, I like uh, the definition of three minutes, so I can uh, you know, get the proper three minutes. Will you uh, come on up here and we'll take care of it. I'm going to set my alarm, which I have in my pocket. <laughs> okay. Oh, sorry, yeah, pardon. We're on law free time. We're on law free time. Law free time. This pop quiz. <laughs> we'll wait till you get started. <laughs> Don't worry about that. This is really great. Thank you, yes, sir. <laughs> oh, excuse me. So before it starts, I want to thank you for your extended time on prayer. And I want to thank you for your flat bench. There's other entities that have this kind of, so nothing will stay on there. And they, when they do their prayer, it's let's get it over with. Somebody will object if we don't pray. Uh, ready, Mark? Good morning. Here are five subjects. One is museums. And I've mentioned this before. That means uh, out there at the prison needs to be a museum. When this one opens, this needs to be a museum. The fort doesn't need to come off and build one with our taxpayer money, and they say it won't be our taxpayers. They need to go into that prison because Alcatraz brings in over a million a year, and we're far more known than Alcatraz. You think we're not? We're in the central part of the state. So museums, and when you give them money, they need to come back and ask the clerk what they did down in Linwood. Beautiful operation. We gave them money. They even wanted to give us back money. I, I, I thought they should be inspected up here, give them back money. That's unusual. But uh, evaluations. Thank you, Mike, for uh, putting that in the paper. I've had a lot of phone calls. I say, you know, I'm not in that business anymore. But it's up 15 percent. Linwood Believe it or not, highest in the goddamn county, 27%. Isn't that amazing? Average gas price, 22%. And again, that's thanks, Mike. Thank you, Mike. I like transparency. What is the cheapest gas you ever bought? No, nope, you never bought that gas. I don't see anybody in here that ever bought $20, 20 cent a gallon gas. Sometimes it was 19, sometimes it was 18 cents, depending if we had a gas war. I uh, ran into a guy the other day, and I'd come in, so I'll finish on me, I'd come in, buy dollars worth of gas, that last me for the weekend society and during the going to school. I ran into a guy who had bought a gallon of gas out there at the gas station, won't give advertisement, and I said, why'd you just buy a gallon? He said, well, uh, it gives me two days to go to work and a day to come back and get a gallon of gas. I said, that's unusual, and then I told him my story about 20 cents a gallon. So I'm asking all entities in our state, in our county rather, to be conservative for the next year or two. There are people out here having problems. There isn't anybody in here having a problem. You don't like the excessive tax, but there's nobody in here that I see that cannot afford a dollar a gallon of gas. We don't need that, though. Interesting thing, 1941, the state came in with one mill. That was 1941. 1953, they added another half mill. Interesting thing for uh, Lubbock County, uh, the state received this year 
$1,241,320. What are our legislators doing? For the, uh, for the year of 2020, the uh, state received $60,866,000. So, uh, Mr. Lawford gave me a very nice how the, the $19 million that the county uh, received, how it was distributed. Yeah. Thought it was very nice. So uh, thank you for your time. Thank, thank you, you for your time. So thank what, you, what year was the 19 cent gas? Well, you're wanting me to tell you how <laughs> old. <laughs> Fred Harvey's architect said that when you're, uh, sometimes you live too long. I'm 83, and that's what she was when she made that statement. But I'll be here another 18 years, so some people will be disappointed. I'm sorry. <laughs> but it was uh, probably, uh, let's see, would have been 51, 52 in that area when I was either driving legally or <laughs> illegally. Thank you, Mr. Clem. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, administrative business. Mark, do you have anything before we go to? Commissioners, in your packet, you have a request uh, for the county to provide a dumpster, a roll-off, um, basically, uh, to drop it off and pick it up for a cleanup in um, the south end of the county. Mike, do you want to say anything on this? This is still at, at 166th and still well. There's still debris up in the trees and stuff that couldn't be brought out to the road after the tornado. And the group from the Trinity Lutheran Church is willing. They got some folks that are willing to come out on the 9th of April on a Saturday and give their day to get that all cleaned up. And just requesting that, uh, if, if possible, we could have the county place a dumpster and they could take the refuse from the tornado still. Who pays for that? Well, be what's the, the cost department. For, what, what's the cost for a dumpster? The, uh, well, we don't, we don't rent out or, we got or provide right dumpsters. Now. It's only for usually county-related functions. So but you can give me there's a cost no, associated with it. There's no, there's no price on it that we can say that we're waiving. Um, there's just the time of staff to take it down there and then to go return it, plus the then empty the contents. So. Okay. Are we going to – didn't we turn down somebody that requested that before? Uh, they had a barn that was in the middle of their place, and we said no. During this, during the, the tornado, tornado, yeah, um, yeah, there was because we wouldn't put a dumpster on private property. There were there were actually two requests I think that came in that we turned down because they were on private property and outside of the right of way at, during the tornado or immediately after the tornado during the cleanup. Well, the property owner has said he's willing to have the dumpster spotted there, but if it's an issue of private property, if that's an issue, then the dumpster could be located down at the uh, township fire department, then it wouldn't be on private property. Okay. But it would be more convenient, and the property owner has provided a letter of request. It, I, I just think it's great that the folks from the church are willing to, to oh, do I this. Oh, I do, too. I, I think it's a good idea, but I don't think the rest of the taxpayers need to pay for it. I mean, people are responsible, personal responsibility for their property uh, we had like nine barns blow over in December in that storm, and we're not cleaning up any of that. Well, this is a, a to me this is a nominal cost, and it's something that's for the public good. Okay, any more comments on that? I don't need a motion. Did you need you need a motion? You said I, I move that we uh, allow the dumpster to be placed up per the request at the uh, location at 166 and Stillwell for the church group to be able to do the cleanup project. I'll second it. Any more discussion? And that's at the property owner's expense as far as time or, or you know, just... Dumping it, you mean? It's just... It's it's just they're just going to place the... Place the, the they place the, the they'll place the dumpster and the, the volunteers will fill the dumpster up. The county will place it. Yes. Yeah. Any more concerns, questions? I just, it, we just need to understand that, that once we've allowed this, that we're going to have to allow this in the future. Well, when there's a tornado in the future, right. we. Or, or a straight line Three wind. years later, though? 
Well, there's still a lot no, of no, areas just, down saying, in that just area. To make that sure that we, no, I'm just saying we need to make sure that we understand that that's something that we can't in the future that we need to. Well, I don't have a problem waiving the okay. fee at the transfer station because I think we recently did that for an organization that volunteered to do a cleanup. But you're talking about a, a staff time taking a big roll off box, which we're cutting into private business. Who does that in this county? There's several private businesses that offer. And we had a guy here last week that has roll off boxes for cleaning up. Uh, I just don't. I mean, if it would have been during the, the time frame that we were cleaning up, I mean, even then, it should have been the volunteers cleaned it up, brought it to the road like everybody else had to do. Well, at that time, there was so much down there that everybody it was Everybody else did it. No, everybody else did okay. not do it. There's still okay. places where it hasn't been done. Okay, we've got any more discussion. I'll start from roll call. Aye. Commissioner Smith. No. Commissioner Aye. Stephen. Commissioner Corson. Nay. Mr. Cause. Nay. Fails three to two. Okay, Mark, anything else? Uh, nothing under administrative business. Okay, consent agenda. Is there any items that need to be pulled? Folks? No, I'll take a motion. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I move that we approve the consent, <coughs> consent agenda as, as presented. Second it. Motion is second. Any discussion on the consent agenda? I'll start roll call. Aye, Commissioner Smith. Aye. Mr. Stephen. Aye. Mr. Culberson. Aye. Mr. Cause. Aye. All right. Moving right along. Formal board action. <coughs> Excuse me. Consider a motion to approve the recommendations for the allocations to the Lovelock County Cities Drug and Alcohol Abuse Council recommendations. Good morning. Uh, Pat Barnhart is joining us from the uh, Special Alcohol um, Funding Committee to talk about the presentations that she does each year from uh, grant applications that she puts the application in the paper and um, schools or organizations can apply for the special alcohol money that is comes from the state through distributions. Uh, currently, there is $113,000 in the special alcohol funding. Uh, do you all have a copy of the grants and the amount? Yes. Okay, good. All right. Uh, we're a little short this year. We had several... Um, Organizations that didn't reapply for one reason or another, so we're only asking for $33,388. Just let it build up, and maybe next year we'll have more folks. I, I'm hoping that we will have more next year, yes. Okay. I'm glad uh, some of these are very, very good organizations. Yes, and I think uh, they all do the... They do a great job, and... Good work. Just, the only thing I remember about this, one year A.C. Bird turned some money back in. A.C. did. Because <laughs> they was, you know, we gave them the money and they just didn't spend it all. And just like Mr. Plemp said earlier, who turns money back in? But, uh, A.C. was a good man. Any other questions, comments? No. I'd like to get a motion, please. Could I take a second and, yes, and sure recognize the other people on the, on yeah, the council? Yes, uh, Yes. Um, Laura Thornton, uh, at, who lives in the Lansing School District, has yep. been on the board for a while. June Foley from Lansing, Deborah Greger from Leavenworth, Barbara Adolphson, uh, and she's from the Easton School District, uh, John and Teresa Groves, uh, they're in the Lansing School District, Chelsea Meyer from Tonganoxie. Bryn Peter uh, from the Baser School District, and Emily Shoemaker uh, from Leavenworth. Very good. Very good. All of those folks are very good. Yep. Appreciate that. You want to make a motion? Sure, I'll make a motion. Do you, uh, you uh, public notice this in February of every year? How do we do this? Uh, January. January. It's January, and then, and then uh, this year I put in, I had them put in a reminder it, it, because we didn't get very many applications. Uh, the, the thing that I do, the, that I do do is the middle of January, 
applications go out to everyone who has received a grant within the last two years. Mm -hmm. So they get the applications right up front. And then there's the, uh, the thing in the paper that, uh, uh, so that other people can apply and look into it and that type of thing. So well, hopefully next year the world gets back to normal. Yeah. Yes, and that's, that's the, the COVID is, has affected right. several of these things. And I'll, I'll that's what the Go right ahead, Vicki. I'll make a motion to approve the allocations to the Leavenworth County and City Drugs and Alcohol Abuse Council recommendation. I'll second it. Motion to second. Any more discussion? I'll start the roll call. Aye. Commissioner Smith. Aye. Commissioner Stevens. Aye. Commissioner Coberson. Aye. Commissioner Cohen. Aye. Very good. Good work. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's got to see you. Yeah, it's good stuff. Take care. Okay, next is consider a motion to approve a supplemental for additional design and construction inspection work for 158th Street Road Improvement Project by MHS in amount not to exceed 40,667.92. Good morning, Bill. Good morning, Commissioners. Uh, today we have a preemptive request. Uh, the current uh, contract for professional services on the 158th Street includes uh, the design modifications that were necessary for the uh, up updating of the plans from 2003 and 2004. Uh, it include the survey staking on the project and then the construction engineering services. Uh, dependent upon the number of days the project actually uh, takes, the construction engineering services are allocated for the duration of the working days of the project. Uh, the project did not start in the first day of those working days. And so, therefore, this supplemental agreement uh, may or may not be necessary, depending upon the contractor's uh, speed at which the project gets done. But these were unallocated uh, or unsubstantiated uh, design uh, due to lack of knowledge of their pre-existing condition and the change of their condition from 2003 to 2004. And so, in order to not come back retroactively at some future date, I wanted to be proactive and put forward this request in front of you due to those uh, due to those oversights in the uh, initial review. I can quickly run through those. There was an electrical power bank at the northeast corner of K32 and 158th Street uh, that required the intersection to be redesigned in order not to have that power bank removed. Um, we had the bridge over I-70 had been replaced since 2003 and uh, had some additional grading work on the approaches that caused those areas, the profile, to be uh, redesigned. And then when we got into the water line, uh, we did work with the water district in order to help bid the portions of the water line replacement, uh, which would have saved the county money. Uh, but by doing so, it added that burden into the construction contract, and there were the possibility, if the work doesn't happen consecutively or uh, co coexisting at different phases as a subcontractor, uh, that that could lengthen the project by approximately 20 days. And so whether that comes uh, to be the case or not is yet to be seen, but the project has started. And so today before you, uh, we have articulated that request uh, in case that it does come They're all valid. Okay. Trust yeah, me. Vicky. Anything on it? Uh, you ready for a motion? Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I move that uh, we approve the supplemental additional design cost for construction inspection work for 158th Road Improvement by MHS not to exceed $40,667.92. Second. Motion to second. Any discussion further? You know, that's what happens when you start a project and kick it down the road. I saw those dates on it, 2003 and 4, yeah. 15, 20 years, and yeah. you know that you've had a bridge replaced. I'm surprised it's not more than that. Uh, electrical, yeah. well, yeah, point, yeah, this yeah. is on the fast track, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, but, you know, that's, it, that's what happens when you don't follow through with your plan. Yeah, I agree. Any other comments? I'll start the roll call. Aye. 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 Okay, next is consider a motion to accept bid from Donlinger for the F-46 bridge replacement project in amount not to exceed 710338 Commissioners, uh, first off, I'd like to uh, 
state the location of the bridge is on 166th Street, uh, approximately half a mile north of US 24 Highway on the west side of the city limits of Pacer. Uh, this structure uh, was designed by Benish over the past several years, and we did receive two bids for the project. Uh, Don Linger, who you recently accepted a bid for the E18 construction, uh, was the low bidder of the project. Uh, we did receive a local firm uh, with Miles Construction uh, or Excavating that was outside of the range of the local preference policy. And so uh, today, for your consideration, we do have a request with a 5% contingency of $710,338 uh, for the project. The engineer's estimate was $732,000. Comments? No. I mean, someday I'm sure the city of Basher will annex this because it's just, it's got city limits yeah. uh, right there at a subdivision. It makes real sense. close. Yeah, it makes sense. So I guess we'll have a new bridge to hand over to Basher one of these days. <laughs> but it does need replaced. I've done some patching on this underneath when I was there toward the end, I believe, 14, 2014 or 15, we've done some pretty good patch in underneath. Well, I'm glad to see, I, I, I noticed in the last couple of years or so, we're doing a lot of bridge replacements that were needed, so I just think this is, I just think this is great when I see these come before me, get some of these done. Any other comments? I'll, I'll move. Go ahead. Mr. Chairman, I'll move that we accept the bid from Don Langer Construction for Bridge F46 replacement project not to exceed $710,338. I'll second it. Motion and a second. Any more discussion? I'll start the roll call. Aye. Commissioner Smith. Aye. Commissioner Stephen. Aye. Mr. Culberson. Aye. Commissioner Cause. Aye. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Commissioners, Bill. on that, I just would like to point out, and it's in uh, Bill's um, RBA, that this project is, was able to be uh, moved up because of ARPA funds for stormwater. So just important that we are utilizing those funds. Absolutely. We're, we're utilizing them for as long-term uh, returns. So. Yeah, very good. Excellent work, gang. Okay. Thank you, Bill. Thanks, Bill. Thank Consider a motion to match Community Corrections FY23 pay plan to the OGA pay plan. Good morning. Sorry to keep you waiting so long. Good morning. I was wrong. I thought it would be quicker. <laughs> All is well. Um, today we're just requesting that you consider our motion to match the community corrections pay plan to the OJA pay plan. Um, I also believe that I spam you all enough with Stuart Little's emails from our little big government lobbyist who recently had sent out the last email stating that both the House and Senate budgets agreed on um, adding an additional about $11 million of funding in 2023, starting in July, um, to the Community Correction statewide budget to give us salary increases based on testimony about our funding crisis, which has um, resulted in our inability to recruit and retain. Right. So they asked each of the agencies, um, the Department of Corrections did, to come up with and present our own plan to become competitive with the OJA pay plan. And our plan is just to match it. And um, I know last year y'all were here when I reclassified my positions and my staff were able to get increases based on taking on additional roles um, to provide 24-7 intake services. Uh, and then come July 1st, the OJA got their pay increase. And so this year we're trying to get out in front of that and anticipate what they're looking at getting for their colas and to remain competitive so I can keep people and fill my vacancies when they come up. Yeah. Commissioners, if I could, yeah, um, th this is not just approving that um, for this year, but we're, what we're um, proposing is that you move them off of the county pay plan and put them onto the state approved pay plan for similar positions. Um, I think Jamie's talked a lot about how they've changed the, the pay plan for the uh, course services. So this is just moving them into that same pay plan. This is funded by the state, 
and subject to approval of their budget by the state. These uh, increases uh, and changes don't go into effect until that's authorized and we receive the funds from the state. Uh, they're on a July 1 calendar uh, for their budget versus our uh, January 1. Yeah. you got to be competitive. I mean, you got to – I don't I don't have an issue with that at all. Any comments or any more questions on it? I'll take a motion then. Motion to approve um, the community corrections request to match or to move the community corrections pay plan from, uh, is that the right way to do this? Um, from the FY23 pay play plan to the OJA pay, pay plan. I'll second it. Motion second. Any discussion? Start to roll. Aye. Commissioner Smith. Aye. Commissioner Stephen. Aye. Commissioner Coverson. Aye. Commissioner Cause. Aye. Very good. Thank you. Simple and easy. Thank, Thank you. you. That's why we try. <laughs> Staff would think they're getting grilled over here. Yeah. <laughs> go go over that way. Okay. Uh, presentations and discussions. Um, if we have anything else, Mark, do you have anything for us? Okay, I'm going to go ahead and start with them. Um, I tomorrow and I saw Commissioner Cause doing it this week. I'll be doing the Mills on Wheels. I hope that's a great program. I hope everybody signs up to help. That, that's just a great. That's just a great program that's done for the citizens of our county. Um, last week at Lansing City Council, um, I asked them to, and we don't have a date, but I know we're going to be meeting with Leavenworth. So whenever Lansing comes around, I asked them to start thinking about some um, uh, agenda items they may want to discuss and we do a joint one. I asked uh, Tim Bandel, the city administrator, to do that. And one other thing that I don't know if you are aware of, but I just want to out there, you know, at uh, Lake Mayor Bernard Park, we have a Veterans Memorial. And we started that about oh, 20 years ago. The city turned over, the city of Lansing turned over the land to uh, uh, the veterans folks. And they've done, they did a bunch of papers or the bricks that you put in for anybody that's a veteran. Well, this year they wanted to, uh, and we had to work out some things with the city of Lansing on who would oversee it and things like that. And they got it all done and it went well. But they all, they in the last six months have uh, asked for uh, some more uh, purchase of the pavers. And in just a few months, they've, um, people have come forward and already ordered 62 more that will be going out there. And if you haven't been out there, 62 is a lot to be going out in that area. So I'm glad to hear that. I want to pass it on. If anybody would like to uh, become part of that, I can get with you later and tell you who to who to contact. But they're hoping to have it by Memorial Day, have them in place. So uh, if you haven't been out there, say it's a good site. So that's all I have done. Oh, I just want to disclose that uh, three commissioners showed up at a luncheon the other day to hear the sheriff speak. Uh, we didn't sit together or anything or had anything. It just Sometimes that happens. Uh, didn't, we didn't plan it. It just happened. Uh, so I just want to disclose that. And I also uh, went on the Meals on Wheels run yesterday. Okay, Basin. so I didn't see. Okay. Uh, well, I just met him down at base. Okay. And, okay. Uh, yeah, no, I'm really I'm really proud of the, the quality of food that we deliver to these it's folks. A, it it's, is really. It's, I think it's – we. our county does a really good job. Uh, it's just – I, I would not be able to do that job because I'd sit there and visit, and some people wouldn't get their food all the time. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> because uh, so, some of the away. folks are very interesting and have a lot of history. Yeah. Uh, they're just and interesting folks, folks to tomorrow. talk to. Yeah. yeah that's and, what I'll be doing uh, Lansing tomorrow. So. so, but anyways, and I didn't get to finish her out. I had to leave a little early because I had had the mark meeting yesterday, and I missed the uh, uh, budget personnel part, but I. Got in on the uh, Zoom on the uh, direct board directors part of it. Good, good. And then I'll have uh, Baser City Council tonight and Fairmount Township tomorrow night. That's it. Very good. Thank you, Doug. Mike. Uh, I'm doing the Meals on Wheels on scheduled as long as my schedule holds up on Friday. Good. So I'm looking yes, forward to that. And uh, visit with, uh, uh, by the way, my dad uh, was sick and Meals on Wheels was really during that time was really, was really 
Good Very to impressive. him. Good to him. Uh, visited with the Linwood uh, uh, city uh, uh, city manager, what, city, city clerk, city clerk. Mm -hmm. and uh, they're, they are in the process of working up their request for ARPA funds that will be coming forward. So, and other than, and there's a township vacancy in Reno Township. Got a copy of that today. So, thank you, Mike. Jeff. Uh, all I have is been working on the landfill stuff 24 seven. So, you think? <laughs> Thank you, Jeff. Thank you. Well, let's see. I did. Well, we all did the parade, which was a oh, lot of fun oh, last that week. Was that was, a, that was, that was a lot of fun. That was a good time. It was a great turnout. There were a lot of kids. It was a lot of fun. I think that was it. Was amazing. And then following that, I did the kneecap. My first meeting with kneecap, and they announced that they were going to expand programming for the the preschool kiddo, kiddos for uh, Leavenworth County. So they will have more children served in Leavenworth County. Um, then, um, let's see, did uh, the workforce partnership yesterday and did Meals on Wheels the day before. That was a lot of fun. And then, uh, let's see, this afternoon here, in just an hour or so, I'm going to do the Kansas City Transit Authority. I'll do it by Zoom because this meeting's running too late for me to make it to Kansas City. Did you do Leavenworth City Commission? Oh, and the Leavenworth City Commission last I evening. I saw you there. Yeah, <laughs> I was there. They, they had a lot of stuff going on. They're getting ready to uh, look at uh, doing a rezone for the property um, for the... Uh, Broadway. The Broadway that where the, um, what do we call it? Council, Council on, Aging. on Aging is, and because um, that property has been purchased by a private owner, and then they're moving forward with the scooters which I think I is going to be that. kind of an exciting thing. We'll see how that works out <laughs> in Leavenworth, having scooters in the downtown area. So, okay. my fun. Thank you. Thanks. So, we're council on aging has a new owner? Yes. Okay. Is and that going to affect anything on our plan? Okay. No, no, no. He was just, he's just looking at okay. rezoning to doing multi-purpose use for the okay. property. I, but we still never, have a contract. contract. We're, we still have. Our, our lease. On. Our lease is okay. The, okay. Yeah, the lease still goes on. All right. Yep. So we're on track. Yep. Okay. Uh, That's it. Thank you, ma'am. Anything else? Mark, David? David? Commissioners, I'd like to compliment each of you for participating on Meals and Wheels. It's uh, one of the better programs the county provides, and the quality of the food is remarkable, but I feel I need to remind you that meals are for the recipients, not the drivers. <laughs> And they need volunteers. It's a little too late. <laughs> they continue to need volunteers. And the Meals on Wheels program continues to need volunteers. Yes. And so growing. please, yeah. if you have the time and inclination. The Council on Aging utilizes a lot of volunteer service, particularly for drivers. So right. those persons who may be retired or a certain age such as I am, if you have additional time, uh, please contact the Council on Aging. You can spend that time uh, mm -hmm. and make it useful. Yeah. No, I, I think we have an excellent council on aging. I think they provide. I can't wait till we get uh, them moved over to the new building. I think, and, and uh, then and the sense. world opens back up. Yeah, and, I agree. Uh, There's a couple of us that, that qualify for services. Yeah, I think <laughs> just about. <laughs> Mark. We didn't need any no, help. A couple of us, if we were infirmed or whatever, qualified for Meals on Wheels. <laughs> yeah, get on. I'll say one uh, for you, two for me. Okay, anything else? Okay. I just want to like, thank the staff out there and the people that, that run the Council on Aging yes. and all their employees. Cause I, They're I amazing. It's running well. I just. Yeah, they are. A great Very order. pleasant to deal with, too. Okay, can I get a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. I'll start to row. Aye. Commissioner Smith. Aye. Commissioner Stevens. Aye. Commissioner Culberson. Aye. Commissioner Cobb. Aye. We are adjourned. Thank you, everybody. <laughs>